Who knows this guy on the left? One person. It saddens me. <laughs> this guy is Craig Alexander. He's arguably the fittest man on the planet, and he's an Aussie. He just, oh, I like it. But the only, he's only the third person to win more than three. He's an Aussie. He's won the last three out of five. Amazing, amazing. So here's how I got a picture of him the year I raced. I did him world record time this year. This is just before I raced. I just wanted to show you guys. They had these chiropractors, a whole tent there, where all the athletes could get adjusted the day before they raced. Very cool stuff. And this is the thing. You think about most of the elite athletes on the planet, the people who really look after their body, they have chiropractors. We think of all of the horses that are about to race in the Melbourne Cup. They've all got chiropractors. You ask their trainer, do they get adjusted? Oh, it's good for me as well. <laughs> but the horses get adjusted. Anyway, about this. This is to finish up. This guy is my hero. You can see I've got a whole bunch of his books there and um, he signed them for me. So his story, you can see he's not built like an Iron Man. He was actually a rugby union player. <laughs> and so he was in his last year. Um, he was going from high school into college, but he had a summer job. And it was landscaping. They're coming around this corner. It's the end of the day. And he's on the back of the truck with his buddies and they're yahooing. And they're about to you know, go on their big summer break. Anyway, this truck's kind of coming around the corner, coming around, and just jams them in. And he falls off the back and just gets dragged. And one leg totally comes off. And the other one, the ankle's just kind of flapping. So anyway, he goes along and has um, the prosthetic put on. And he tries to get back into life, and it just doesn't happen for him. Because every time he tries to run or do any kind of activity, the other ankle, the, all, the stitch, all the ligaments start coming apart. And so he says, what the heck, just cut that one off as well. So he chooses to become a double amputee. And then had this uh, divine calling from God, whatever. But he basically had this compelling reason. That's the point of the story. That he was driven that he wanted to do the Iron Man. And it wasn't for him. It was from all the victims, or I shouldn't say victims, soldiers who were returning from Iraq with legs and stuff blown off. And basically trying to fit back into society and just having a, bit of, a bit of a challenge with it, having a bit of a pity party. So he wanted to do that, as I said, not for himself, but to show other people of what's possible. So he actually raced the year before I did, but he was there the next year and he'd written this book. Awesome, awesome book. I'll probably try and put it on the lending library for you guys to have a read of. But picture this. Imagine swimming with that. <laughs> okay, just the legs dangling. Imagine riding the bike. But the biggest thing, imagine doing a marathon. The guy weighs like 100 kilos. So every five kilometers at the aid station, he'd have to take his prosthetic off, tip the pool of blood out and wipe the pus away, put it back on. So don't press the snooze button, OK? There's just no excuses. But the first part in it, you have to get beyond yourself. So we're going to take just a few minutes right now one of my mentors, Anthony Robbins, he said, never leave the sight of setting a goal without doing something towards its attainment. I don't even care what the goal is. What I want you to do now is start your little list of whys. If you've still got that story you told on the front or the excuses, just flick back to it and get your biro and just scratch it all out. You need to erase that, like getting a CD and scratching it so it can't play anymore. You don't want that story playing in your head. You want that story. 